communication. Second, let's talk about alignment to the direction of the company. So, as it relates to the direction of the company, what most people do, and uh, we've all, I've been guilty of this at times too, I come to work, I start doing activities, like, you know, I got fires to put out, I'm running around like a chicken, I'm hitting it off, I'm doing stuff, and then, and then practice makes permanent. So those activities become my behaviors, my habits, and then the, that gives me my results. And then my results take me to my destination. It would kind of be like doing, doing business this way. It's kind of like if you were going to go on vacation, you decide to go on vacation. Like, let's just get in our car and start driving and see if we end up somewhere cool. You might end up somewhere awesome, like Florida. You could end up in Ferguson, near Island. You don't want to end up there. But the point is, is you've got, you've got this way of doing things. And people that come to work, and think about this, it doesn't matter if you're a player. You could have the top performing shop or, or parts of the company in the country. But if you're coming to work and you're just doing stuff, are you really growing? You're living inside your comfort zone at this point. So what are, what are the high performers that, that stretch their comfort zone? Have you guys, by the way, have any of you guys heard this? Where does it, growth doesn't happen inside your what? Doesn't have, growth does not happen in here. So if you're just doing this, you're living in your comfort zone, you can't grow. So what do high performers do to grow? They are going to say, hey, here's the destination. Here's the vision I want to create. This is where, yeah, how do I want my shop to look in three years? How many more bays are we going to need? How much more revenue are we generating? What sort of management team are we going to need to, to staff up in order to, to build this vision for success? So you crystallize your vision for success, one that you're excited about. And then you bring your team in on it. You get them involved in building this vision. And then you set goals and benchmarks to accomplishing that. And then you figure out what behaviors need to become part of the day-to-day -day routine for each person on the team. And then you figure out what action you need to take. And even if you're an A player and you're already kicking butt, I promise you there's a whole nother tier because even Michael Jordan, who's an A player, had a, had a coach on the sideline watching him play the game, challenging him to be better. So if you create this vision and you challenge your team to help to, to move towards that, now you're stretching your comfort zone and that's where you get your growth. And then you take this to your employees and they start thinking, hey, I want to do this. I'd like to be the new extra manager. Maybe I'd like to get a promotion. And how do people come to work when they feel like there's a chance that they can move up in their company and get a promotion? Yesterday, I was, uh, I've been having amazing conversations with a lot of you guys in here, uh, a lot of the, uh, the area managers. And, but I had two, yesterday, I had two different service managers, and I asked them, how long have you been at your dealership, and how did you end up there, and stuff like that. Two in a row told me, uh, well, I actually was a service advisor, but I was stuck in my career, and I couldn't move up, and I ended up uh, you know, seeing a job ad for a service manager online and going there instead. And so now that's how I became a service manager. And I asked them both the same question. If you could, if at your last job you, you felt like you could move up, if you were being developed, and would you have stayed there? And they guess what they both told me? Yeah, yes. I would have. Yes, absolutely. So create that vision and figure out where everyone on your team, how they want to fit into that vision.